Jean Lannis, 1st Duc de Montebello, 1st Prince de Suez, was a marshal of the empire. He was one of Napoleon's most daring and talented generals. Napoleon once commented on Lannis, I found him a pygmy and left him a giant. A personal friend of the emperor, he was allowed to address him with the familiar, too, as opposed to the formal, vu. Early life. Lannis was born in the small town of Lector, in the Gersh department in the south of France. He was the son of a Gascon farmer, Jeanette Lannis and wife Jean Pommies and paternal grandson of Pierre Lane and wife Bernard Escasio. Both died in 1721, and wife Cesar Forin Yan, and was apprenticed to a dyer. He had little education, but his great strength and proficiency in all manly sports caused him in 1792 to be elected sergeant major of the Battalion of Volunteers of Gersh, which he had joined on the breaking out of war between Spain and the French Republic. He served through the campaigns in the Pyrenees in 1793 and 1794, and rose by distinguished conduct to the rank of chef de brigade. However, in 1795, on the reform of the army introduced by the Thermidorians, he was dismissed from his rank. He married twice, in Pepinian, the 19th of March 1795 to Paulette Merrick, whom he divorced because of infidelity in 1800, after she had given birth to an illegitimate son while he was campaigning in Egypt. Jean-Claude Lannis de Montebello, who died unmarried and without issue, and secondly at dawns on 16 September 1800 to Louise Antoinette, Comtesse de Guiacute Acute and EUC, by whom he had five children, Louis Napoleon, Alfred Jean, Jean Ernest, Gustave Olivier, Josephine Louise, one who succeeded in his titles and three others who used the courtesy title of Baron. One of his direct descendants, Philippe Lanas de Montebello, was until 2008 the director of the Metropolitan Museum of Art, Campaigns of Italy and Egypt. He re-enlisted as a simple volunteer in the French ARM EQT d'Italia, and in its campaign of 1796, he again fought his way up to high rank, being eventually made a general of brigade by orders of Bonaparte. He was distinguished in every battle. At the Battle of Bassano he captured two enemy flags with his own hands and was wounded in the Battle of the Bridge of Arcole while aiding Bonaparte to escape the Austrian advance. He was chosen by Bonaparte to accompany him to Egypt as commander in one of Kleber's brigades, in which capacity he greatly distinguished himself, especially on the retreat from Syria. He was wounded at the Battle of Abuka. He went back to France with Bonaparte and assisted him in his 1799 coup. After Bonaparte's takeover and appointment as consul of France, Lannis was promoted to the ranks a general of division and commandant of the consular guard. Back with the ARM EQT d'Italia, Lannis commanded the advanced guard in the crossing of the Alps in 1800, was instrumental in winning the Battle of Montebello, from which he afterwards took his title and bore the brunt of the Battle of Marengo, service to the empire. In 1801 Napoleon sent him as ambassador to Portugal. Opinions differ as to his merits in this capacity. Napoleon never made such use of him again. Lannis purchased the 17th century Chateau de Maison, near Paris, in 1804 and had one of its state apartments redecorated for a visit from Napoleon. On the establishment of the empire he was created a Marshal of France and commanded once more the advance guard of a great French army in the campaign of Austerlitz. At Austerlitz he had the left of the Grand AARM EQT. In the 1806-07 campaign he was at his best commanding his corps with the greatest credit in the march through the Thuringian forest, the action of Saalfeld and the Battle of Jena. His leadership of the advanced guard at Friedland was even more prominent. In 1807, Napoleon recreated the Duchy of Suez and granted it to Jean Lannis, 
After Prussia was forced to cede all her acquisitions from the second and third partitions of Poland. After this, Lannis was to be tested as a commander-in-chief, for Napoleon took him to Spain in 1808, and gave him a detached wing of the army, with which he won a victory over Castanos at Tudela on the 22nd of November. In January 1809 he was sent to attempt the capture of Saragossa, and by 21 February, after one of the most stubborn defences in history, was in possession of the place. He said, this damned Bonaparte is going to get us all killed, after his last campaign in Spain. In 1808, Napoleon created him Duc de Montebello, and in 1809, for the last time, gave him command of the advanced guard. He took part in the engagements around Ecbal and the advance on Vienna. With his corps he led the French army across the Danube, and bore the brunt, with Massena, of the terrible Battle of Aspern Essling. On the 22nd of May he received a mortal wound. His eldest son was made a peer of France by Louis XVIII. Death on the 22nd of May, during a lull in the second day of the Battle of Aspern Essling, Marshal Lannis went and sat down at the edge of a ditch, his hand over his eyes and his legs crossed. As he sat there, plunged in gloomy meditation on having seen his friend General de Brigade Pouzet killed mid-conversation by a cannonball. A cannonball, fired from a gun at Enzersdorf, ricocheted, and struck him just where his legs crossed. The knee pan of one was smashed, and the back sinews of the other torn. The marshal said, I am wounded, it's nothing much, give me your hand to help me up. He tried to rise, but could not. He was carried to the Tete port, where the chief surgeons proceeded to dress his wound. One of the marshal's legs was amputated. He bore the operation with great courage. It was hardly over when Napoleon came up and, kneeling beside the stretcher, wept as he embraced the marshal. Lana's other leg was later also amputated. On 23 May he was transported by boat to the finest house in Kaiser Ebersdorf. Eight days later he succumbed to his wounds at daybreak on 31 May. Lannis was initially buried in Les Invalides, Paris. But in 1810, Lannis was exhumed and reinterred in the Panthère National after a grandiose ceremony. Assessment Lannis ranks with Louis Nicolas Davout and André Massena as the ablest of all of Napoleon's marshals. He was continually employed in tasks requiring the utmost resolution and daring, and more especially when the emperor's combinations depended upon the vigor and self-sacrifice of a detachment or fraction of the army. It was thus with Lanus at Friedland and at Espern as it was with Dabout at Austerlitz and Auerstadt, and Napoleon's estimate of his subordinates' capacities can almost exactly be judged by the frequency with which he used them to prepare the way for his own shattering blow. Dependable generals with the usual military virtue, or careful and exact troop leaders like Salt and MacDonald, are kept under Napoleon's own hand for the final assault which he himself launched. The long hours of preparatory fighting against odds of 2-2-1, which alone made the final blow possible, he entrusted only to men of extraordinary courage and high capacity for command. In his own words, he found Lannis a pygmy, and left him a giant. Lanz's place in his affections was never filled.